Praise the Lord. Let's do it. Is this the water? Yeah, we have to put them in individual bags. Are you sure they're in one bag? Yeah, after we preach, we should go get some bags. Thursday. Thursday, we'll get back. We'll have it for Thursday. I'll, okay. I'll get them in between now and then. All right. All right I'm going to move on now because right. I'll bring a banner. All right, I'll wait on you. Okay. Check, check, check. If you need a water or a Bible, come get yourself a Bible, a free large print King James Bible. It's free. Gospel track, sir. Got free Bible if you need one. No, no, I got some. All right, God bless you. You like a gospel track, sir? Free water? No gospel track for you? I got one. Today. You're. Oh, you got one? Okay. You, are you living for Jesus? Got him. You got him? Amen. We'll serve him every day. He's coming back. So. I'm not going to just part of our team and get sick because he, he got me in my back. He's protecting you. That's right. He's protecting me as well. How you doing, sir? Can you give you a free gospel track? We got uh, water. Do you all need a water? Yeah, I'll do great. Oh, yes, yeah, the water was great. It's not cold. I mean, it's not hot. But it's not cold. It's perfect for Can I have one of your Bibles? Oh, Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Can you write on it? Yeah, on the last day, Jesus said we'll be judged out of his word. So read this, read that gospel track, use it as a bookmark. There you go. And start, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll start you in the book of John, okay? Mm -hmm. Start in the book of John. And the Bible says, if you seek the Lord with all your heart, you'll find Him. So, seek Him out. Read this every day, all right? Do you need prayer for anything? Here you go. All right, God bless you. Jacob. Amber, great to meet you, Amber. God bless you. Do you need prayer for anything, Amber? You do? What do you need prayer for? Addiction? All right. I'm going to pray for you. Yeah. All right, I'll pray for you real quick, all right? Fluff, you fucking bad man. All right. You take care of yourself now. Gospel track, man. Gospel track, ma'am. Huh? Way of salvation through Christ. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, you're welcome.
free water come get yourself a free water we got free bibles here judgment day is coming soon the bible says we got to prepare to meet thy god come get yourself a free king james large print bible new king james bible gospel track sir the way of salvation repent and follow christ judgment day is coming soon How you doing, ma'am? Right, nice. you, you need a free Bible? No. Take gospel track for you. Turn to Christ. Judgment day is coming soon. No sinners will enter the kingdom of God. You got to be changed. You got to be born again of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you want to give your life to Christ, he'll receive you. God bless you. Free Bible? All right, read it every day. Read it every day. Jesus said, you are my disciple if you abide in my word. The Bible says if you ask God for the Holy Spirit and you're willing to obey him, he'll give you the Holy Spirit. Yeah, water? Yeah, water God, water, 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 water. Yeah, God bless you. Read yeah. it every day, all right? He's coming back. God bless you. Here, take a gospel track, sir. Hey, sir, did you get one of these? I forgot to give you one of these. God bless you. You're welcome. Way of salvation. The way of salvation through Jesus Christ alone. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Yeah, my brother. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. You grab what you need. Oh, one of these? No, I got two of them. Like the water from my brother. Oh, yeah, yeah. Amen. God bless you. Hey man, get your water quick. These waters are going quick today. If you want a free water, a free bottle of water. If you want a free Bible, come get yourself a free Bible. So, the Bible says there's no other name given under heaven by which we must be saved but by the name of Jesus Christ. There's no other name. The Bible says every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Bible says, I am not ashamed of this gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to all those who believe, first unto the Jew and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of, of God is revealed from faith to faith. You see, through the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. The fact that he would send his own son for you and I, for wretched sinners, is righteous. This is the goodness and the mercy of God, that he would change you. God is not going to leave you a miserable sinner, but Christ delivers people from sin. Christ, Christ delivers people from marijuana smoking. Christ delivers people from tobacco addiction. Christ delivers people from sin. God bless you. Free water? Would you like a free water? Yes. I got one. I got one. Would you like a free uh, Bible? Yes, sir, I would. No, I got one. You got a Bible? I would be a picture if I get home. All right. All right, thank you. Read it every day. We'll be judged out of the book out of the book in the end. Jesus said you'll be judged by my word in the last day. What's the last day? The last day is when the Bible says we'll be judged. The Bible says we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the things done in the body according to what we have done. You see, God is going to render to each one according to their deeds, according to the, your works. So you can't be saved by your works, but you'll be judged by your works. You'll be judged according to what you did in this life. So if you don't have true faith, you're not going to make it. The Bible says, being justified by faith we become sons of God. 
It's not through the works of the law. There's our friend. It's not through the works of the law. You see, a lot of people want to get mad at the preacher because they're still in sin, but Jesus Christ loves your soul. The preacher loves your soul. And that's why he tells you the truth. He tells you what Jesus said. I don't want your money. I want you to go to heaven when you die. I want you to be forgiven. I want you to be a soldier of Christ, not a soldier of the devil. The Bible says to endure, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ and do not be entangled in the affairs of this life. We can't be entangled in the, in the cares of this life. Jesus said, let tomorrow worry about tomorrow. Today has its own worries. You need to serve the Lord. He's coming back soon. Serve the Lord. He's coming back soon. Yes, He is. See this coronavirus? See all these signs in the heavens? Jesus said there would be pestilences. Jesus said there would be rumors of wars. You know Jesus is coming back soon. You know it in your heart. You know the end is near. My question to you is, what are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Are you preparing to stand before God and to give an account for every thought, word, and deed? That's my question. You need a, a Bible, sir? Read it. God bless you. Read it every day. You see, the Bible doesn't do us any good if we don't read it. The Bible's only good if you read it and ingest it. Ask God to give you understanding of it. God will break you free. He'll help you walk out of all addictions. The Bible says if we would only walk in the light as He is in the light, then we would have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ. His Son cleanses us from all sin. So we have to walk in the light. There's something we have to do to be saved. And Jesus said, first you have to repent. Otherwise you will all likewise perish. Repentance means to have a change of mind. It means you used to think it was okay to sin, but now you change your mind. Now you agree with God that His way is right. His way is true. And you follow Jesus. He said, if any man comes after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me daily. I hear a lot of people that are professing Christ, but they deny Him by their works. Your life testifies whether you're a true Christian or not. Whether you have the faith of Abraham will be seen in your life because you'll be living an obedient life to Christ. You'll be living an obedient, pleasing life unto the Lord. That is what is the mark of a true disciple. The Bible says, By this we know that we know Him if we keep His commandments. He who says, I know Him and does not keep His commandments is a liar and the truth is not in Him. So the Bible says if you claim to be a Christian but you don't keep God's commandments, the Bible says you're a liar. You're a false convert. You're still on your way to hell. You need a Savior. The Bible says you shall name His name Jesus for He shall save His people from their sins. I couldn't be saved in my sin. I had to be saved from my sin. And when the true gospel comes, the true gospel will not leave you a filthy sinner. The true gospel will change your life and give you your purpose on why you were created. You were created to serve the living God, to know Him, to obey Him, and to please Him with your life. You were created for God's good pleasure, to give Him glory through your life, not to live in sin. That does not give God glory. No, the Bible says we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who saved us. They're not preaching this at the Baptist church you go to. No, no, no. They're telling you that we're all going to sin. We're all going to mess up. But that's not what Christ said. Christ said if your hand causes you to sin, cut your hand off. Because it would be better for you to go to heaven with one hand than to go to hell fire with both your hands. You're going to hell fire if you don't come out of your sin, in other words. So this is what true saving faith will do. True saving faith will deliver you from those old drugs. Saving faith will deliver you from the sex outside of marriage and the prostitution. Jesus has a plan for your life. And it's not to be bound in sin. It's that you would be more than conquerors through Christ who saved you. Amen. So as we walk in faith, 
God gives us grace to overcome sin. Grace is God giving you unmerited power over sin. You can't earn it. When God changes you and gives you power, it's not because you were a good person. It's not because you impressed Him with your, with your lifestyle. It's because of His goodness and His mercy that He empowers you and changes you into the image of His Son. So the whole point is that you would be changed into a new creature in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. All things become new when you're a Christian, you see. Why? Because your mind is getting renewed in the mind of Christ. You're preparing for Judgment Day. You're preparing to stand before your Creator and say, I gave you my whole heart. I gave you my whole life. And guess what He'll say to you? Well done, good and faithful servant. But if you continue on the path of sin, you're going to hear these words. Depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. I never knew you. That's what the Bible teaches. So you have to come out from among them and be separate. Touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you, saith the Lord. God's forgiveness is conditional. God's forgiveness is conditional on your response. You have to accept the Lord Jesus and show your acceptance of Him by your obedience. By your obedience. Your obedience will show that you have faith. The Bible says faith without works is dead. So if you say that I have faith in God, but your life doesn't show it, the Bible says your faith is dead and you're still on your way to hell. I don't want you to be on your way to hell. I want you to have faith that leads you to righteousness. Faith that leads you to holiness and obedience. If you need a Bible, if you need water, come over here and get a free Bible. If you need prayer, come get yourself some prayer. Yes, God will send you to hell if you don't change. That's what the Bible teaches. In Luke 13, 3, the Bible says, Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. It's your soul in the line. If you reject the truth, it's your own fault. I'm here to deliver a message that there is hope in Jesus alone. Not in your sin. The wages of sin is death. That's eternal death. If you're in sin, you're on your way to hell fire. The good news is, is that Christ came to change your life. But you have to accept the message of Jesus. The Bible says, this is the message that we received from Him and give to you. That in Him there is no darkness. For if we say that we have fellowship in Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, then we have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. I've been cleansed from all sin. Now I'm walking in the newness of life. This is a real supernatural event that God gives to people that get born again. They will not be in dead religion. They will know their God. They will be filled with the Spirit of God. Yes, God throws sinners into hell every single day because they don't receive His Son. The Bible says if we continue in sin, that we're trampling the blood of Jesus under our feet. We're saying, you know what? The blood of Jesus means nothing to me if you continue in sin. That's what the Bible says in John or I'm sorry, in Hebrews chapter 10. It says, if we willfully sin after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. So God's saying, look, if you know it's wicked, you've got to turn away from it or it'll cost you your soul. And we're not talking about a hundred year sentence and then you get out. There's no purgatory, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about eternal hell fire. You will never get out. You will weep. You will wail. You will scream in conscious e torment for eternity. That's your future without God. That's your future in your sin. You're on a dead end road in your sin and you need Jesus Christ to help you 
to live a holy life. You need to be born again. You need to be changed so that you can have life and life more abundantly. The Bible says the devil came to kill, steal, and destroy. But it is Jesus that came to give you life and life more abundantly. I'm here to get to bring you to a decision. You either accept Jesus and obey Him and follow Him and love Him with all your heart, or you choose your sin and choose lukewarmness and you end up going to hell in the end. What do you want to do? What do you want to do with your life? What do you want to do with your eternity? Because the Bible says you choose this day whom you will serve. Either God in obedience to Him or the devil in obedience to Him. You can't serve two masters. You will either be faithful to the one and hate the other or you will despise the one and love the other. You cannot serve God and money. You cannot serve God and money. You cannot serve God and the devil. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money, greed, it's the root of all evil. Trying to think that money will make your problems better. Money will not make your life better. You're still going to be sin sick. You're still going to be caught in sin on your way to hell. Jesus said, what would it profit you if a man gained the whole world and then lost his soul? What would it profit him? Because this life is but a vapor that appears for a moment and then it's gone. This life is quick. You already know people that have died. You already know people that have been here and now they're gone. And you're going to be gone. The Bible says it's appointed for man once to die and then comes the judgment. So you're going to be judged according to what you do. So the Bible says this. God commands everyone everywhere to repent because he has ordained a day in which he will judge this world in righteousness he has given us assurance of this by raising jesus from the dead so jesus was raised from the dead this good how do we know that jesus was raised from the dead because he changed me because he filled me with the holy ghost because he gave me power over sin Amen. So Jesus Christ can help you. Jesus Christ can help you come out of your sin and live a life for Him. Yeah. Jesus Christ wants to change your life. He wants you to serve Him and go to heaven when you die. Yes, He can set you free. Jesus Christ has a plan for your life. Jesus Christ has a plan for each one of His creatures. We're God's creatures. And He has a plan for our life. You weren't created by accident. You're not created. God loves you. And God has a plan for you. But you have to reach back. God is reaching out to you today. But will you reach back? That's the question. Will you reach back when God reaches out to you? I don't know about you, but I want to go to heaven when I die. I don't want to be in burning hell fire forever. Amen. I don't want that. And I don't want that for you. So I come out here to shine the light on the devil's lies that are keeping you in sin. God can help you in your situation. God can make things happen for you in your situation. Your family can be saved. Your son can be saved. A lot of you don't even realize that your kids are on their way to hell and that they need Jesus Christ. But first, you have to get saved. First, you need Jesus Christ. You can't help anybody else until you first help yourself. That's why Christ said, first remove the plank out of your own eye and then you'll see clearly to remove the speck out of your brother's eye. You need a Bible? You need a Bible? Would you like a water too? No, thank you. Just wanted to donations. Oh, no. We don't take donations. Thank you, though. We could buy water with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll buy two cases of water with that. All right. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Be blessed in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
yeah, at an event, like if we were at, a, at, a, at an event, yeah. I wouldn't do that and blah, blah, like that. But okay. since we're on a public street, out on the sidewalk right there, and she wants to donate it for water, we're good. Gospel track, sir? The way of salvation? You need a water, sir? Oh, okay. Okay. You need a Bible? Okay. You need a Bible? Okay. All right. God bless you now. God bless you. Live for Jesus Christ. Live for the King. Live for the one who died for you. Come get yourself a free water. Come get yourself a Bible. God loves you. God has a plan for your life. The Bible says this, that God is not slack concerning His promise, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any man should perish, but that all men should come to repentance. In Luke 24, 47, the Bible says that Jesus commands every Christian to go out and to preach repentance and remission of sins in His name to all nations. So that's what we're doing today. We're out here to preach repentance and salvation in His name to all nations. Repentance. Why repentance? Because unless you stop breaking God's moral law, you will not go to hell. But it's not just enough to stop breaking His law. Then you have to receive the Spirit of Christ, you see, into your life. And you have to start reading your Bible. You make a commitment to follow Jesus. And He gives you life. The Bible says we would walk in the newness of life. That's what God wants. He wants good things for us. God wants good things for us. God doesn't want to punish us. God wants to teach us His ways and bring us to heaven when we die. Amen. But you have to commit your way to Jesus. You have to commit your heart, commit your family, commit your marriage, commit every part of you to Jesus Christ. He said, you cannot be my disciple unless you forsake all that you have. That's Luke 14, 33. Christ commands obedience. The Bible says Jesus is the author of eternal salvation to all those who obey Him. You see? So we're here for those who want to have a change in their life. Do you believe? Do you believe the Word of God? Do you believe the Bible? Because the Bible says this. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect. So the reason why you need to read your Bible every day is so that you could be perfect in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we might present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. That means that you have gotten the sin out of your life that God hates and you have gotten the good things into your life that God loves. The Bible says to hate what is evil and to love what is good. Hate what is evil. That's what God wants you to do. That's scripture. Hate what is evil and cling to the Lord. Cling to what is good. And He will give you life. He will give you life. You see, drugs, alcohol, sex, all these things do not fix the problem. It's a temporary band-aid on a shotgun wound, you see? But the, but the permanent problem, or the permanent answer, you could say, is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the answer to Dayton, Ohio. It's, it's not good politics, even though when Jesus comes, He will give us good politics. It's not a better politician. That's not going to save us. It's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. It's you changing your life through the gospel. That's what's going to change your family. That's what's going to change your life. Is you. So you have to prepare yourself first before you can be used of God. You can't go out in your sin and really make a difference for God. The Bible says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For the pulling down of strongholds,
and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So the Bible says we're ready to punish all disobedience once our obedience is fulfilled. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 through 6. So I want you to know this Bible because this Bible is able to save your soul. The Bible says to lay aside all filthiness and all overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted Word of God which is able to save your soul. You see, the Word of God is powerful. The Word of God is sharp and powerful. It's alive. The Word of God is alive and the Word is 100% true. The Word of God is able to save your soul. If the Word of God could change me from a drug dealing, uh, violent man, then the Word of God can change you. If you cry out to God, if you cry out for mercy, if you make up your mind, the Bible says to set your mind on the things above. Set your mind on godly things where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. I want you to think about eternal things. I want you to think about being right at Judgment Day. Judgment Day is coming, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why God sent out preachers that you might believe that you might get a Bible and start a Bible study in your family. I want you to start teaching your children the Word of God. That's what I want. That's what God wants. I want you to be an example to these young people. I want you to be an example to these young people. Because these young people need role models. These young people need role models. And you are the one that God is choosing to be an example. The Bible says if we say we abide in Jesus, we are to walk just as He walked. So we're called to walk like Jesus. We're called to walk like the Master. You're called to be a soldier of Christ. You've got a calling on your life. You have a calling on your life. But the question is, will you answer that call? Will you be used of God? Will you walk worthy of your calling like, like God told us to? Will you fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life? Because that's what the Bible says to do. I want you to be somebody that you can never be without God. That's the whole point of Christianity. Is that we depend on Him the way that Christ depended on Him. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's how I can live holy every day. It's not through me, through me being a great person. It's through Christ empowering me to live in a way that I could never live on my own efforts. Christ gives us power to live holy. Christ gives us anointing to serve Him. Because the devil is going to come against you if you start following Christ. So you have to prepare for the trials ahead of you. If you start to follow Jesus, the devil's going to throw a bunch of traps in front of you to try to trip you up. And you have to be wise to the devil's schemes. That's why you need the Word of God. Because the Word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, you see? The Word of God will not leave you looking like a fool in the devil's eye. The devil can't fool you when you got the light of God's Word in your life. You can see where the devil's trying to trip you up. You can see the lies of the devil that's trying to deceive you. The Bible says that the devil is the father of all lies. He said, the truth is not in him. And Jesus said, Satan will have no part in me. So that's why when you come out and you follow Christ, you have to come out wholeheartedly. The Bible says you have to love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself. That's a lot of love. That's a life fully committed to the Lord in order to go he to heaven. And the Bible says if you love God with this intensity, you will not be sinning against your neighbor. Because He will be giving you grace to live a holy life every day. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the goodness of God. This is the way of salvation that few people find. Jesus said that few people go to heaven. He said, uh, broad is the way and wide is the path that leads to destruction and many go in thereat. But he said, narrow is the way and straight is the gate and few people find it. He said, to strive to enter in at the narrow gate for many will try to enter in at it but will not be able to. So Christ is telling us, strive to enter in at that narrow gate, that that gate of Jesus Christ. It's a straight path. It's, it's the holy way of God. And you can't do it without God. You can't do it just being religious on Sundays. You can't do it just going to a religion and doing a religious ceremony every once in a while. That's not what God wants. God wants to walk with you each day and hold your hand and help you get through each temptation, help you get through every trial and every trap of the devil and find victory in your life. The Bible's, are, are, there's a song that says the saints will go marching in. The saints will go marching in. You see, the will of God is not for you to be beat up all the time by the devil. The will of God is that you would be a strong, wise, trained soldier in the army of the Lord. And that you would find victory in Jesus Christ. You would find victory in the Lord. That's what we're here to proclaim is this Jesus. This Jesus is your Savior. There is no other Savior. If you do not receive Him, you will go to hell. If you don't believe on Him, you will not be saved. So that's why we're here to try to can try to speak some wisdom into your life so that you could seek God out for yourself. The Bible says to seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. Let the wicked forsake His way and the unrighteous man His thoughts. And the Lord will have mercy on him and to our God, for He will abundantly pardon. God will abundantly pardon the person who seeks His face and departs from evil calling on his name that's scripture the bible also says if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then i will hear from heaven then i will forgive their sin and then i will heal their land so you have to cry out to god and turn from your wicked ways and then god will forgive your sin you're not forgiven in your sin while you live in sin. Can I see if I can get another case of water in that little store right there? I got five bucks. Can you hold this yeah, for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Dina. Ah. Oh, Jacob. Jacob, this is Sister Dina. Hi, the Lord, Sister Dina. The Lord just I went did, the wrong way. <laughs> the Lord just did a miracle in her life. Hey. She, been, she prayed and she sought the Lord. And um, he got her out of jail yeah. today. Wow. And she's, yeah, she made a commitment. I've been here for 12 days and I was praying, God, please take me out. He hey. yeah, made a commitment yeah. to Lord follow God. the Lord and not to go back to sin. Right? That's what I did. Yes. I was in jail for 12 days. And I got out and oh, I... Oh, 12 days? Yeah. Oh, 12 days. That's, yeah, yeah. That's like me. Yes. yes. And I never went back. Yeah, I'm pregnant. Hopefully my parents forgive me. They will. Yeah. They will. But you have to stay humble and follow Jesus. Yeah, amen. Amen. My parents are Christians. Oh, praise God. They're yeah. praying for you, girl. Yeah. yeah, we just prayed together a minute ago. Yeah, then, praise uh, the Lord. But yeah, but yeah, the same testimony, though, this guy. Yeah, 12 uh, days. Do you know the place that goes to uh, Eucharist Avenue? What is it? Eucharist? Yeah, on and on Main Street. I thought it Not the bus, but walking, you mean? Yeah, walking. Okay, I can look it up on my phone. So, the final message is what are you going to do? When you stand before God and you're naked, there's nothing to hide behind. And He recalls your life. He brings, opens up the books and judges you out of the books. What is He going to see? Is He going to see a life pleasing to Him? A life surrendered to Him? 
Or is he going to see hip hypocrisy? Because judgment is coming. I want you to be saved. I want you to be forgiven. I want you to be set free and filled with the Holy Ghost. I want you to wear the name of Christ, not only in, neat, in name, but in deed. A lot of people claim to be Christian. We hear that word a lot. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. But Jesus said, they profess me with their mouth, but their works are far from me. You can't just say you're a Christian and live however you want to live. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but do not do the things that I say? He said, don't be deceived. Your righteousness has to succeed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. You see, the scribes and Pharisees claimed to be saved. They claimed to be the people of God. But they did not live righteous lives. They were hypocrites. And when you have the true faith of Abraham, you won't be a hypocrite. You'll be a faithful son or daughter of God. And you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Today's the day of salvation. You don't know when you're going to die. You could die today. But sadly, most people will harden their heart at the message of the gospel. And they will not be saved. They will never be used by God. That's sad to me. No, I'm, I'm believing for revival. I'm believing that you're going to know God for yourself. I'm believing that you're going to have the blood of Jesus over your sins. And you're going to go and sin no more, like Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 11. Jesus said, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing happen to you. But what are these false preachers telling you nowadays? They're telling you that you can't go and sin no more. But Jesus commands it. That's why very few people are going to go to heaven when they die. Because they lie. They don't know the truth. They don't study their Bibles. They haven't been set free. They haven't broken free from their addictions. They haven't broken free of their sins. Sin separates you from God. And it is your iniquities that He will not hear you. The Bible says God does not hear the prayers of sinners. But, is it, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does His will, He hears Him. So you have to be a worshiper of God and do His will. Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So my question to you is, are you doing the will of your Father? You! You! Amen. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Are you doing the will of your Father in heaven? Are you living a life that you can see Jesus living? Is there no deceit in your mouth? No deceit in your life? Or are you still on the fast path that leads to hell? I don't want you to get off the fast path that leads to hell and get on the path of righteousness that leads to heaven. Get on the path of righteousness that leads to heaven. Jesus Christ is coming back soon. You know the end is near. You know the end is near. Christ is the King. He's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Amen. Praise God. And we live for Him with all of our heart. Our life shows that we're in love with Him, that we obey Him as our Father. God is a good God. He sent His Son to the world that whosoever believes on Him would not perish but have everlasting life. That's a good God. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't send my Son for wicked people. That's a merciful God that would do that so that we could be saved. Isn't that good? So it would be wise of you to line up with this God of the Bible. It would be wise of you to take heed to His Word, to obey Him. It would be eternally wise for you to wake up and realize that it's not about this short little life that you live, but it's about eternity. 
It's about knowing, knowing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and loving Him and showing Him and not being ashamed of Him. Apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed of this gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to all those who believe. And Jesus said, you would see the glory of God if you would just believe. So we want you to see the glory of God. We want you to believe God for miracles. I want you to believe God for the impossible. Because He'll do it. If you have faith. If you have faith, real faith, that causes you to obey Him. Real faith that pleases Him. Don't fight against the preachers. Fight against the devil. Fight against sin. Jesus is still saving people. Jesus is still forgiving people. You're not in hell yet. There's still hope for you. You can still change your life. You can still, you can still come out of sin and live a life that's pleasing to God. Yes, you can. Don't believe the devil. Don't believe those lies. Get yourself a good King James Bible or a new King James Bible and walk into your destiny. God is a calling on your life. But the question is, will you answer the calling or will you remain in your sin and go to hell? I want you to be used of God. I want you to give glory to God because He's a good God. He's a loving God. He's a merciful God to those who trust in Him, to those who obey Him, to those who who go after Him. The Bible says, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me daily. Your life is running out. Your time is short. When Christ comes back, it will be too late. You will not have another chance. Once you die, it's heaven or hell. There is no purgatory. And Christ has given you another day to get right with Him. Another day to escape the damnation of hell. Another day to be forgiven and set free and receive the love of God and forgiveness. Forgiveness is available. Forgiveness is available to you today through the blood of Jesus. The Bible says, there is no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. Jesus died for you that, he, that you might live for Him. Jesus died for you that you might live for Him. That you might be forgiven of all your past sins and walk in a new and living way that is pleasing. A new and living way of God that is pleasing to God. You were not created to be your own God. You were created to serve the one and only God. The Bible says this. Jesus said, I wish that you would know the one true God and Jesus Christ whom He has sent. The Bible says there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. The Bible says to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. When you get saved, you're in a battlefield. When you get saved, the devil's trying to stop you from breaking through to bear much fruit. The Bible says some would bear 30, some would bear 60, and some would bear a hundredfold fruit. God wants you to bear fruit. The Bible says if any tree does not bear good fruit, he is cut down and thrown into the fire. If your life isn't producing good, holy fruit, then the Bible says in John 15 that you'll be thrown into a fire. A furnace of fire is coming your way if you don't repent and start bearing fruit worthy of repentance. Repent and bear fruit worthy of repentance. Come get yourself a Bible. Come get yourself a, a water. Yeah. How many we got? Uh, uh, just an update too. But uh, that lady, the, she's a boss lady type lady. She came over and showed me some paper. We're too loud. All that. I just, she said we already called the cops. And called so, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God's got a calling for your life.
God's got a calling for your life. I want you to come into your destiny and know the God of the Bible and serve Him. The Bible says those who know their God, they would do great exploits. That means they would do great adventures. They, they would do missions for God. They would follow Him and fight for Him. The Bible says, who will stand up for me against the evildoers? Who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? That's Psalms 94, 16. So, we're here to tell you we will stand up against the workers of iniquity. We will stand up against evil and wickedness. So that's my question to you. Turn to Christ. Measure your bus when it goes by. And subtract that off of it. Measure your bus when it goes by and subtract that off of that number. Exactly. Exactly. Because that's what we're competing against. We got workers of iniquity. We got enemies of God that are trying to stop the gospel from going out. So you have to, you can't take this gospel for granted. Because guess what? God sees you. God sees you, not you. You, lady, God sees you. You're coming up against your creator. And God will exact vengeance upon you. If you make yourself the enemy of God, watch out. I'm warning you. Watch out. You don't have to watch out for me. You have to watch out for the Creator. I know I shouldn't do this, but you guys are being very brave. You're being rude. So I'm here to tell you, God is the King. God is going to exact vengeance upon you if you don't live for Him, if you don't obey Him. God is a loving God, but He's a terror to the wicked. The Bible says, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. We persuade men. So yes, we're here to tell you, if you come up against the gospel preacher, God will personally deal with you. God will personally deal with you. Yes. And you don't want God as your enemy. The Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It's a fearful thing. You don't want God as your enemy. You want God on your side. You want to be on His side. Because we read the end of the book. We know who wins at the end of this book. Yes. Come to Christ today. You're going to stand before God soon. You're going to be judged for your life according to what you do in this body. You've got to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and in due time, He will exalt you. The Bible is 100% true. If you don't believe the Bible, you will not be saved. The Bible says you will blaspheme His Word. When you say, I don't believe the Bible, you're blaspheming His Word. The Bible says, I'm able to preserve my Word in Psalms chapter 12. God is able to preserve His Word. Yes, and we're here to tell you, today is the day to get right with God. I see young people die on these streets all the time. Most of them ain't ready to meet God. Most of them ain't living for, for God. You think you have a whole bunch of time, but God says, today is the day to get right with Him. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to be forgiven. And why do you want to come up against the gospel preacher? Huh? Don't come up against God's servant or God will deal with you personally. I'm, I'm speaking for God right now. I've seen it happen. I know people that God had, that have fell over dead with a heart attack before. So you better fear God. Because God's trying to save these young people because you guys won't parent them. Because you won't parent your kids. You got kids out here selling drugs, smoking weed right in front of a gospel preacher, and then you want to try to shut up the preacher. Shame on RTA. Shame on RTA. Shame on RTA. Shame on you. I'm trying to raise your kids because you can't spank them. You got drug dealers running all around here, and you want to come up against a gospel preacher. Shame on you. Shame on you, RTA. Shame on you. I'm trying to raise your kids because you don't, you don't know how to raise your kids. You don't spank them. 
And what do they do? They come out here and sell drugs and die and go to hell. And then you want to come up against the gospel preacher. Shame on you. Shame on you. It's time to get right with God. It's time to be forgiven. It's time to be set free. It's time to quit coming up against God's messenger. Because God, God is not playing any games with Dayton, Ohio. God has sent preachers out here for the last two years. And if you don't get right with Him, the vengeance of God be upon you. The blood of Jesus is against you in your sin. There is no once saved, always saved. That's a doctrine of devils. Jesus Christ will save anybody who believes on His name. Even you that reject His word. I have given nothing but Scripture to you today. Heaven and earth witness against you today. If you do not receive the goodness of God, heaven and earth witness against you in your sin. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. You just repent. Like you're send me to for the, hell. If, if you don't repent, that's what the Bible says. I went to church. For that's why you need the Bible because you, you, right, you went. Way, man. Come uh, talk to me. Yeah, I'll come. A lot of you went to false, false churches that say, if you get baptized, you're going to go to heaven. No, no, the Bible says if you repent and believe the gospel, you will be a new creature in Christ. That's what the Bible says. And you will be a son or daughter of God, you will live by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what you need to be teaching your kids. The Bible. The Bible is able to save your soul. The Bible is able to give your kids a future. The Word of God. Otherwise, they'll grow up like all these other kids that are selling dope, selling drugs, and go to hell. A lot of them still think that it's okay to be a homosexual. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, Do not be deceived. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicator, nor idolater, nor adulterer, nor homosexual, nor sodomite, nor thief, nor covetous, nor drunkard shall inherit the kingdom of God. But you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. That's what I want for you. God wants a blessing for your life. But you want to persecute the preacher. You want to come against the preacher. Well, look. The Bible says this. God Himself said this. At the end of Psalms 34, He said, Those who hate My servants, I will destroy. Those who hate my servants, I will destroy at the end of Psalms 33. So I don't want you to hate me and be destroyed. I want you to receive the love of the gospel and be forgiven. This is eternal life. Eternal life. Sin equals death. Sin equals death. The wages of sin is death. If you break man's law, you go to jail. You break God's law, you go to hell. That's the Bible. That's scripture. You don't know the Bible. That's why you're still in sin. Because you haven't been set free by the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You don't know the truth. That's why you fight against the preacher. The preacher's been preaching scripture to you all day. All day. Yes, I am the preacher, son. You better humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. You are in big trouble if you don't repent. Eternally. Eternal big trouble. You and your well, your false Baptist doctrine are going to burn in hell. And I'm telling you that out of mercy. No, I'm living a life for Christ. I'm contending with the wicked, like the Bible said to do. I'm contending with the wicked. Well, look, you blaspheme God and you think you're okay with God. No. No, you can't hear the voice of God because you are not of God. Jesus said it. If, if you were of God, you could hear the words of God. I didn't talk to a nine year old. False accuser. That's another reason you're going to hell. False accuser. I didn't talk to no nine year old. 
I haven't talked to that nine-year-old all day. You're wicked. Wicked. You need to repent. God is against you in your sin. If you come up against the preacher, you will lose 100% of the time. Shame on you. Hey, all I've given you is the truth, and you hate me for the truth. Apostle Paul said, why do you hate me for telling you the truth? You are rising up against and saying, you are speaking lies and hypocrisy. You are saying that, that the wages of sin is not death, when the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. I want you, I want you to be forgiven. That's why I'm here. Oh yeah, the Bible says, because you did not believe in the Son of God, you are condemned already. No, you don't need my forgiveness, you need my Creator's forgiveness. No, you don't. No, you don't, because you reject God's messenger, you reject God. Yes! The Bible says to judge righteous judgment. How you doing? God bless you, man. Look, not everybody's prideful. Some people are humble. Yes. You don't know the Bible. God's messengers were sent to judge. No, you don't. If you knew the Bible, you would fear God and not come up against me. Almost 30 years. I'm not afraid of you. Okay, I'm not afraid of you. years. I played drums, guitar. That doesn't uh, save you. Minister of music. I was a uh, youth minister and everything. Okay. You ain't God. I am the voice of God. God. Yes, I am. I'm speaking the word of God. I'm the messenger of God. I'm not God. I'm the messenger of God. If you were reading your Bible more than playing those instruments, you might understand that I've been speaking scripture to you the whole time. And the scripture is this, unless ye repent, you will all likewise perish. I'm sorry they didn't preach that to you in your false church, but the Bible is what you go off of, not the, not the church. I am judging as I preach, that's right. I'm supposed to judge. Yes, I am. Judge not, lest ye be judged. I'm ready to be judged. I'm living holy for God. I'm living holy for God. Yes. You're judging me. You're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. You're the hypocrite. The Bible says this. Love. Love does not rejoice in hypocrisy. It rejoices in the truth. I got a bunch of hypocrites living in sin, living in sin, trying to raise up against the gospel preacher. No, no, I deal with the, the police love me. Do you know why? Because I help people all the time. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Look. Hey, look, I still want you to be saved, Ohio State. I want you to be saved. Look, all of you guys, what are you doing? You're contending with a gospel preacher that's telling you how to be saved. You know why? Because you love your sin. You love your sin. Yes, you do. You love sin. And guess what? Sinners will have their part in the lake of fire. Yes, I'm supposed to judge. God is going to judge you on the last day. I'm preparing you for the day of judgment. By giving you a little taste of judgment. I'm preparing you for the day of judgment. I'm not judging you eternally. I'm telling you you can I'm telling you you can still be saved. You can still be saved. If you What's his name, Tom? Is it Tom? I don't know. Is it Tom Doherty? No, that guy. I'm not condemning you to hell. I'm not I'm not the final judge. If I, I wasn't even talking to you. I was talking to everybody. I was giving a blanket warning to everybody, if you stay in sin, you will go to hell. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how long you played in the in the church choir. I'm 52 years old. It doesn't matter. I've been going to church, been going to church all my life. That, that's filthy rags on the side of God. Yeah. You have to be justified and washed in the blood. Washed from your sins. No, your church is better than No, it's not about church. It's about knowing the Bible. I know the Bible. I know the Bible. Well, if you... If, the Bible says, be a doer of the word. Listen, listen. Be a doer of the word and not a hearer only deceiving yourself. That's James 1.22. It says, be a, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only deceiving yourself. A lot of you, you think you're saved? 
But you're just deceiving yourself because you're not doing the word. You're, you're plotting against God. You're plotting against the message of God. And guess what? The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke Satan and his workers of iniquity. The Lord rebuke you. I'm not talking to your kid. I don't know who that kid is. I'm talking to you. And every person that's standing up against God's servant. Do you think, do you think this coronavirus is by accident? No, God's trying to wake you up. God's trying to wake you up. Who, if you know the Bible, you would know that pestilence comes from the Lord. God is a judge. That's who, God is a judge. Do you not know that? Do you not know that the Bible says that God's going to judge your life according to what you do? Whether good or evil? Look, God sends pestilence to warn you. God sends pestilence to warn you that if you don't repent, it's going to get worse. Jesus said, unless you repent, a worse thing will come upon you. Jesus said, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. And you guys try to make God is, act like he's not a judge. God is a judge. He's holy, holy, holy. He sends people to hell fire from the church every single day. Because the American church is full of hypocrisy, disobedience, and ungodliness. The American church is so wicked. I'm sorry that you guys are victims of the American church. I've, I, I've been saved by reading the Bible. The Bible. That's what you need. You need the Bible. That, they didn't teach you the Bible in your church. That's why, that's why you don't think you can judge. Jesus said, first remove the plank out of your own eye, and then you'll see clearly to remove the speck in your brother's eye. So yes, I removed this plank out of my eye. And if you were more humble, I would deal with you more gently. But you guys are so proud, you need a hard word. You need a man of God to stand up flat-footed on holiness and tell you it's holiness or hell because that's what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 it says pursue peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord so you have to pursue holiness with your whole heart is that your is that if that was your job you would be loving this word you would not be fighting against the word of God you'll lose fighting against the word of God the Word of God is a sharp sword, able to divide between soul and spirit. Yes, this city is wicked. This city is wicked. And I'm here to proclaim judgment, God's judgment. The Bible says God loves judgment in the Bible. And if you were of God, you would love the righteous judgment of God. Which is one of the seven spirits of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come to Jesus today. Give your life to Christ today. Be forgiven today. Be born again today. Quit resisting the Holy Spirit. Stiff necked. Stiff necked. You're stiff necked, hard hearted. You will not hear the voice of God. You will not hear the words of God. So, according to your works, let it be done. God bless you. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus Christ is the author of eternal salvation to all those who obey him. Not everybody, you know, the, the worst, you know who killed Jesus? Religious people like you. Religious people like you killed Jesus. People that claimed, you know what Jesus said? He said, do what they say, but don't do what they do. Jesus said, I rebuke and chasten all those who I love. Therefore, be zealous and repent. So, Jesus is rebuking you, yes. He's rebuking you because you are, you are blaspheming the Word of God. You're saying that God did not say what He said. And look, I want you to, listen, listen, I forgive you. Listen, I forgive you. Okay, well, that's up to you. I forgive you anyway. I forgive you. You can go and you can get right with God. You're in sin. That's why you're fighting against me, because you love your sin. 
That's why. And you, and you don't think you can be free of sin. But I'm here to tell you as a witness that you can be free of sin, that God wants to free you of sin, and that you can have mercy from God today. If you would follow Jesus with all of your heart, give Him your whole heart, love Him with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, and give glory unto Him. Hallelujah. Yes. Come to Christ. Quit hardening your heart. Come to the one who died for you. False religion can't save you. Going your own way can't save you. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but do not obey my word? You are not Jesus's if you don't obey him. So that's, that's the message today. Repent. Look it up. Luke 13, 3. Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Repent means you change your mind. You agree that you need a Savior. You need a Savior. You grew up... I'm sorry that you grew up in churches that are lukewarm, but in the real church of Jesus Christ, people are being set free of sin. I'm just telling you, if, if you were of the church of Jesus Christ, then you would understand that I'm speaking Scripture to you. You don't know the Word of God, that's why you're in trouble. Now the Bible says to lay aside all filthiness and all... Okay, Hebrews chapter 4. I'm sorry, James chapter 1. You, you want to lay aside... One, James chapter 1, verse 21. Look up. James chapter 1, verse 20 through, through 22. That's James. Good, good, good. Hallelujah. All the devils are coming out today. I'm not ashamed of this gospel. Somebody's going to get saved today. That's why the devil's so mad. Because one of you got a calling on your life, and the devil's fighting so hard so that you would not receive the, the Word of God. Oh yeah, you'll see the wrath of God. You will see the wrath of God. If you don't come out of your, your delusion, the Bible says to awake the righteousness and sin not. That's what it says. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Yeah, Google it. 1 Corinthians 15. Awake to righteousness and sin not. That's what I'm telling you. You're mad at me because I'm telling you it's God's way or the highway. But it's always been that way. It's God's way or the highway. He is not your Lord. If He was your Lord, you would obey Him. Go ahead. Huh? Go ahead. Don't you just say those who stand before you are like enemies? Yes. Or don't you say to turn the other cheek? Sometimes, yeah. In the right circumstances. Yes. So, come to Christ. Receive the Holy Spirit today. And you can have mercy. Yes. You're not saved, sir. You're not saved. Jesus said, I am telling you you're not saved. Out of love. Me I because I see your fruit. I go to church. I, 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 I minister. You minister. I play drums in church. Okay. I go to church three times a week. All right. Three times a week. I know the Bible front down. 50 years old. I've been reading it all my life. Okay. There ain't nothing you can tell me that okay. I don't already know. All right. You've been busted in several lies already. I haven't been busted in one lie. Yes, you have. But I will talk to you if you want to talk. Yes, you have. Look, yes, sir, you have. I, I want to help you. You can't help me. You told me you I can't help you. If you don't repent. I know more. Being religious can't you save you. He just got you. Look. Every verse you said, I've looked at it and it's nothing to what you're saying. That's not true. What, that is true. what, what version are you in? I'm in the King James. Look, Google this verse. Awake to righteousness and sin not. See, I mean, you're lying. Who's lying? You are. You're saying I'm giving. I'm making up verses. You have. No, I haven't made up. Okay, this one right here. James, let me get a Bible. If you really want me to do this, I will because I care for y'all. 
Yes, you do. If you love them. And then he just said that I was a gangster rapper and that gangster rappers are not welcome to church. Are you kidding me right now? You guys are the most gangster. If you're men of God, I've never seen you. Yes. I've been around men of God my whole life. Okay, look. Are black women welcome in church? It's getting hot and heavy. Look, I will show you the scriptures if you want. You guys, you guys don't want the scriptures. I'll show the scriptures. I'll show them to you. Do not let you be judged. I am not the Bible scholar. God love you. I am the Bible scholar. God love you for speaking Jesus and not witnessing. But you're also preaching a message of hate. No, I hate sin. Everybody here, I hate sin. Okay. Who's the last? The Bible says that the hate. The last a time long time ago. ago. Well, you're preaching a message of hate. You call it everybody down this thing. Drug yeah. dealers and sinners. You, yes, they are sinners. Also a sinner. I am not a sinner. You are a sinner. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm a saint. I'm a saint. Oh, oh, oh so now you're a false I've been prophet. I've been washed in the blood. I've been washed in the blood. Oh, so you're a false prophet. No, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a real man of God. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, hey, look. Wait, wait, wait. The Bible says, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. But let me, let me say something. Go ahead. We're about 15, 20 minutes past our park time, yeah. so if we want to start pulling it down, or I can yeah. go put more. I can go put more money in it and stay. If you want to hold yeah. it down, so you make the call, bro. Either we pull it down or I go put more money in the thing. I can start pulling it down. I'm trying to get these guys to hear the word of God, but I don't think they're hearing. Listen, yeah. I know y'all big on God, man. Y'all, 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 y'all. Who said black people? He didn't say black people are not welcome in church. He most certainly did. Why are you lying? You guys are false accusers. Oh, hey, I'm black. Hey, let me be black. Can I have black grandchildren? Even guys are. Want to act out of the savage manner? You see this? Everything I've said right here, you liar. Listen, hold on. Lies have their part in the lake of fire. Hey, brother, don't run. What you running for? Look, look, look. You guys like some problems. If you don't preach with that little taste of pain, calm it down a little bit. Calm it down a little bit. Put everybody. If you're in sin, you need to be washed from that sin. Okay. Everybody is in sin, and no, you're not. That's a lie. No. The Bible says, says you don't sin. First John 3 8. He is. Hey, the truth is, listen. Not the Lord. I can't learn. Listen. God damn it, man. How am I supposed to be a First John 3 8. He who sins is of the devil. First John 3 8. He who sins is of the devil. Look it up. First John. I was a sinner. Now I'm a saint. I, I live. Yes. A saint. A saint. What is y'all faith? There's a difference between being saved. Being sanctified and being a saint. So what's the difference? Yes, once you get saved, you get saved from sin. That's the the Bible says, "You shall name his name Jesus, for they shall save his people from their sins." You can't be saved as a drug dealer. You need to be saved from your drug dealing. You can't be saved as a masturbator, porn watcher. You have to be saved from that porn watching. I'm just saying in general. I'm not saying you. I'm. I was all those things. I was a drug dealer. I'm not accusing you. I'm just saying you have to be saved from sin. They don't want to talk. They don't want the word of God. They've rejected the word of God. I'm telling you that Jesus came to set the captives free. The Bible says he who commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave will not abide in the house forever. But a son will abide forever. Therefore, if the son sets you free, you shall be free indeed. Yes, you don't like the Bible. And the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Know the truth. Do you know the truth? Do you know the truth? Because the truth will set you free. Listen, read John chapter 8. Get yourself a good King James Bible or a new King James Bible. Don't fight against the preacher. Don't fight against the preacher. The Bible says Noah was a preacher of righteousness. We preach righteousness. We preach repentance, like Christ said in Luke 24, 47. The Bible says to preach repentance and remission of sins. Repentance. 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 That's what I'm preaching to you. I'm preaching to you repentance. And that you can have mercy. But you want to fight against me. You don't want mercy. You want to continue in your own religious ways. Continue doing your religious works, but not be changed. That doesn't save you, sir. 
I, I, I'm here. I'm here to help you. That doesn't. Going to church doesn't save you. Being born again of the Holy Spirit chain is what saves you. Repenting of sin. The Bible says, "By this we know that we know Him, if if we keep His commandments." He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. So if you say you know God but don't keep his commandments, the Bible says you're a liar. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not picking on you. I'm saying anybody who says they're a Christian but don't keep his commandments is a liar. That's what the Bible says. And God's word will stand. You're, you will have no excuse on judgment day. And I, I want you to listen to the word and be saved. That's what I want. Don't harden your heart against, against the Word of God. You'll lose. The Word of God is here to correct you in sin. Praise the Lord. How you doing? Hey, God bless you. Amen. Thank you. We need it. We do definitely at a time like this. Yes. Man, I'm ready to go if you are. Yeah, let me go get the van. Hey man, God bless you all. I hope you're I hope you've received the word of God. We're gonna get out of here. Actually, we can carry him. We carry him. We're gonna get out of here, guys. If you need a Bible, you better come now because we're heading out of here. We got other things to do. But uh remember, without holiness, no man will see the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. So you you can't stay in ignorance. God has sent a messenger to you today to warn you about sin. So come out of your sin and live for Christ. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. we got things we got to do. But receive a Bible if you need it. Receive a water if you're thirsty. God bless you. God bless your children. Teach them the ways of God so that they don't get swallowed up in this world. And uh, I love you. I love you. Don't let anybody lie to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you, man. Good to see you, man. Hey, I've been praying for you. Yeah, you're welcome. I need my head. Pray for me every day, God. I ain't in a boy issue right now. I'm homeless. Yes. I walk with my dad. I walk with my mom. I don't know about him, man. I'm by myself. Amen. I, I tried to get my shit in my head. Yeah. Okay, you get some own drug, drug, go bad, okay? Yeah, try to get help, okay? I ain't gonna lie to you, okay? Yeah. Because God, oh, God told me. I've been there. Tell, tell the truth. Tell yeah. the truth that you yeah. free. That's right. Tell the truth. Always, yeah. always be honest. Yeah, yeah. Because, right. because if you hot, if you lie, you will go to straight to hell. That's right. That's right. Tell people I tell them. That's right. You That's right. Hell, man. Okay. Yeah. Hey, man. Don't believe. Don't believe the liars. No. Because a lot of people are saying. Hey, man. Hey, man. Good to see you, Scott. Hey, God bless you, man. Good to see you guys, man. God bless you. Yeah. It was Matthew? Matthew. Matthew. Praise God. Matthew yeah. Gunther. We prayed for you this morning. Thank you. And, and for Scott. Thank Amen. you. Hey, you're welcome, man. Thank you. Thank hey, you. you just keep fighting, and you just keep fighting the good fight. All right? We are going to be at again. We going to be at Booksy again. Uh, Thursday, we'll be here again okay. about this time. Okay. You know, maybe a little bit earlier. Okay. And then... And then on Saturday, we'll be at Dayton Street Church. Who's that? That's where you went before on last Saturday. Remember at the park? Oh, Riverscape. Yeah, Riverscape. Okay. Yeah, man, we'll be there every Saturday at 1 o'clock. I got that pizza. That's right. The only thing we need to do, pray, pray for people every day. That's right, pray for people every day. Yeah, we do. Oh, Mr. North Korea, no freedom of speech, I can't say that. I don't, I don't Put your mask off. Put your mask off. Put your mask off. What's the name of it? None of your business. Where is your church? What's the name of it? None of your business. It doesn't sound like you're the type of Christian my mother was. We're the type of Christian that rebukes wicked people. Like you. Like me. Yes. I'm not the one making noise and getting all these No, you come all the way from the... You come all the way from your office to cuss us out out here. Not today, but every day. And now you came out here to lay on your horn so we can be the good You know why? You ever shut up long enough to listen? I, you're not my boss. Because if I can't hear myself think up there, then you're violating the city. You need to get saved, sir. You need to get saved. It might not be a. You guys are breaking nice.
So what? Well, I'm just 120 back And your buses are going probably 110 when they go back. It's not consistent. It's not consistent. We have to be able to do the right to hold. Check this out. Check this out, uh, Mr. Soon, CEO. You can be heard. I'm going to give you a little homework, Mr. CEO. Check out SAIA, SAIA versus New York. We have a right to be heard. With ambient noises, which include your buses, we have a right to reach you. You have a right to be heard. That ain't the case. You just don't like the message. I don't care about the book. Yes, you do. And it, and it, your, mom, your, your mother would be ashamed of you. Your mother would be ashamed of you right now. Yes, she would. Well, there you go. You have no respect for your mom. So we're going to get out of here. Let me get one out of there. Look. Let me get one and buy one out of there. People need Jesus, and you are trying to get in the way of that. Yes, you are. You keep it down low where we can't hear you. We don't care. You can stay here for three weeks. Amen. Yeah, put this as a bookmark. What's up, man? You know, I'm trying to follow the rest of you because uh, we don't ever really get a chance to dialogue, man. I see you getting a lot of flack now, man. It's been time for people to rest. Hey, look, when the wicked rise up, so I'm trying to figure out what is it. We got it back. We got it back. Yeah, you ready to go? We got it back. Look, man. I ain't got no enemies here. I'm here to. I'm here. To, I'm here to preach a message. I understand that. Now, see what, what you're preaching, man. Sometimes I'm starting to learn that some some people are not really receptive to it, and they don't have to stay and listen. But they want to fight against me. I'm going to keep. I'm, I'm going to contend for the faith. I'm to that now. How is it that when you go, you come out for the right thing, and you give yeah. reactions like some of the brothers that I would because they're wicked, man. They work. They work for the devil. That's what. That's what I think is one of the key things that your your fearlessness to say what you feel about people is causing an adverse reaction and you don't okay. care because you already are there you got jesus you got what you need you're saved they're that's not right. that's right sense. the problem the problem so i got pushing them down like he said maybe you might want to just tone some of the word play because the I hear you. elder woman I hear you. is upset the, i hear you. you know things have been happening to you i even came to you because there were some times that you were saying things and you guys just won't hear nobody but what you're what you're practicing, what you're pushing out there. Okay. And that's like, okay, that's cool, but the world is out here too. What about India? What about China? What about different yeah. perspectives? Well, I'm here, I'm here to give a message. If, if they don't, if, if you want to reject the message of Christ, that's on you. But when you try to stop other people, see, look, some people want to be saved. Not everybody wants to go to hell. So when you try to stop other people from receiving that are on drugs, that are, that are dying, that's why I'm upset because I'm a father to the fatherless. Okay, okay, now check this. So I care about people. That's true, that's true. But see, you are a certain kind of father. There may be a Muslim father. There may, there may be a father from India, a Chinese father. So you mean that because you're a particular kind of father, if a father is not the kind of father that you profess to be, then they are damned to hell. And that's what you're getting your problem at, man. I think well, that you really need to start, start taking a worldview, a more deeper introspective worldview about what it is that you're teaching and practicing so that the people who live in the world with you won't feel offended by what you're teaching, brother. Because, yeah. hey, listen, if I can say the same thing that you're teaching me about Jesus Christ, Islam, um, Brahma, Stephen, if I can teach the whole the whole thing without us all arguing about I got to be a Christian, I got to be a Muslim, and we can all get along, what's what's your problem? Well, because everybody I, that I talk to, I am getting I, I, I am getting along. Only with people that come up and contend against me, I'm going to answer them. So if you know, if they're saying, here's what I have a problem with, is when people claim that they're preaching the Bible, but they're preaching lies. You see. I, I know that you don't believe the Bible, but I... That's not true. That's okay, not true. okay, well, I, I misunderstood that. Yes, I'm, 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 may I clarify? I misunderstood I, I'm that. I'm learning okay. the history, the true history of the Bible, okay. not, not the religious part. Yeah. Go ahead. You have judged us down here. You go over to the city and the county building and stand out in front and preach the word of God to them. Because there's, there's dope dealers and dope dealers I preach everywhere. everywhere. I preach everywhere. Well, I've never I'm seen a street preacher. The I preach down at the bars. I was down the night of the shooting I was down there preaching oh yeah that's right I, that's why I'm and there's they're everywhere down here too well look my job is to get a message out because people are dying and Jesus is able to help them I hope that 
I hope that that we can learn to cohabitate together. And because my my goal is to get the message out to save souls. When I see people getting in the way, that I do get upset. That's right, because I, I care for people. So, you know, I, I'm not personally judging you. I'm judging anybody who comes up against the gospel. If that includes you, then I guess I am judging you. So, yeah, that's, I'm a, I'm, I am a judge. I am a judge. Yeah, okay. I'm a judge, though. You better believe so I'm here to judge righteously. If, if you're trying to stop the gospel, you're in big danger with God. Hold on. I know, but I'm about to read okay. it to them because they're having a quarrel. And I'm saying I'm not even a Christian. It's crazy that y'all do. Listen, what the Bible says. If I, and listen, this is what they say. If, if what I got to say is not already in this Bible, then you are justified in proving me a liar, right? You're justified in proving me a liar. What I got to say ain't in here. All right, so I'm just using what you're talking it's about. Not that serious, man. Let's just use our mind. Look, every every word is true in that book. Yeah, he said, give me, yeah. yeah. Could you, uh, I have a proposal. You give us, 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 you give Go to law before the unjust or the unrighteous, right? Try. And not before the saints. Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? Now, see, this is the part Try. where people say only God will judge me. Hey, hey, wait a second. Who is this talking in this part of Corinthians? Is it David? Is it who? Who is that speaking? Because he's speaking Paul. to the Corinthians, That's right? Paul. So he's uh, the Holy he's Spirit a, through he, Paul. He's the main corner, the cornerstone of the religion, right? Thank you. No, Christ is a cornerstone. Okay, Christ is the cornerstone of the religion. Saint Peter, the Rock, all these different terminologies, right? But still, it's right here saying that 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 not only saints, God can saints judge me, judge. but the, the, but the saints. What is a saint? A saint is a holy one. It's a holy one of God, right? You're a descendant right. of God. You're in the image of God. You move according to the will of God. You're a saint. Right. Now, you move outside of that order, you're no longer a saint. You become in the demonic spirits, right? That's right. Okay. So as a saint. We, as saints, are supposed to judge the world, but they tell us that only God can judge me. So right. who's, who's, Take whose who's doctrine is confusing people? The world's See, doctrine. What I think, what the, I think, the world's doctrine. You got Methodists, you got Pentecostals, you got Baptists, you got Seventh-day Adventists, but y'all all Christians. But then I sit down and ask y'all Methodists and y'all Pentecostals. This is what I'm trying to do, learn how yeah. to be a Christian. Yeah. But I can't roll with just one of y'all because y'all all ain't all on the same page. Now, no, listen, just trust, just trust, just trust, trust the I Bible. I can't because that's what I'm trying to tell you. You won't listen. Your Bible is your one you picked. You didn't write it. You ain't had shit to do. You brand new like I'm brand new. Now you trying to get here and tell me how to operate it. How does that work for you? How did you get in the position well, to be able to work it better than other Because people? God chose me and taught me so I can teach other people. God chose you. Yes, he God chose, chose me. A, cr a criminal. So, okay, we all... God chose a you, criminal. Your words are very sharp, but I'm an intellectual and I analyze okay. words. I'm not okay. you in a I'm saying I was a criminal. God chose me and set me free, taught me his word. He spoke to me audibly. He spoke to me audibly. He gave me his Holy Spirit and he sent me out into the battlefield. Okay, so can I say that God did the same thing for me? Not if it's not true. So what makes it different? This is what I'm saying. That's what's your problem, If it's man. true. Listen to how I'm saying, you saying true. True. Let's talk about what truth is for a minute. Let's talk about truth. Jesus what, what is, is true. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's your Bible? Yeah. Uh, listen, listen. No, no, here. That's not, that's, I, have, I, have, that's, I have I got one of that. That's the truth right there, bro. Don't get wrong, man. You got to go see what you said. Yeah, we got to go. Uh, uh, hey. Got yeah, we, yeah, we got to go. We got to run. Go. We got to run. I'm sorry. You my Look, nigga. You, but if you ain't got no no paperwork or nothing, I got shit right here. That is, go. If you ain't reading this, you ain't Don't believe in me. It's a lie. That's what I'm saying. Bless your heart. Hey, God bless y'all. Hey, man. Seems like they humbled themselves a little bit. Hi, Scott. Hey, Scott. Hey. Hey, God bless you, man. Good to see you. You're looking good, man. Thank you. Keep up the good work. You've been working on her for a lot. Huh? He joined in on the conversation I was having with that woman. He started noticing to Yeah, he, he's still struggling a little bit, but he's... he's Kind of like, like, kind of like we were still like, uh, still drinking and still doing all that stuff and trying and ministering. Who, Jay? Who? Yeah, Scott. Scott. Yeah. Oh, you talked to him? Yeah, I did. Hey, man. We talked a bit. Yeah. Hey, I told Matthew we was praying for him this and, morning. Oh yeah, yeah. I told Scott that. And hey, Melissa, man. we'll see you on Saturday, right? Saturday yeah. One o'clock. Okay. Right? Yeah. Saturday, yeah. One o'clock. Saturday. Uh, yeah, one it starts yeah. at one. 
So we'll be there a little early. We'll be there, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll be there. And it's Riverscape. Yeah. Riverscape, yeah. Riverscape Park. Can't yeah, miss it. Is it on the uh, pavilion thing right yeah. the over Under the tent, yep, the big white tent. All right. All right, we'll see you there. See you there. All right, y'all stay out of trouble. Powerful day, bro. <laughs> yeah, the CEO kind of humbled himself. Yeah, he did. Because well, I had him on video. It was some pretty, pretty uh, coverage. Yeah. Live stream, actually. <laughs> I did a quick live stream. Of, and, uh, of okay. all those people standing yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was real quick, but I mean, I, I did it. And, uh... Praise God. Man, I knew that was going to be a powerful day. Yeah, praise God. And a half. Wow, man, the devil's rising up on us. That's a, but the Lord prevailed, didn't he? He, did. he got them subdued. Absolutely. He kept them subdued. Glory to God. Glory to God, brother. Man. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, amen. Yeah. I'll let it cool off with that door. Yeah. 